Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the DNX podcast. I'm so excited to be here today with my friend Alexandra. And uh, she's here to talk to us about how to find your passion and your purpose. So Alexandra, thank you so much for making the time to be here. And why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Perfect. Thank you for having me. So um, as you said, my name is Alexandra. I'm from, I'm from Norway originally. And then I, at the very young age of, of 14, I started modeling already, but I was always like a complete uh, tomboy slash Pocahontas roaming the forest and somehow I ended up in that industry and saw it as a great opportunity to travel because it's sort of hard to tell your parents that you want to go on a on a gap year right when you're when you're 14 so um, I decided to do high school over the me too me too I was 14 when I started and started planning my gap year so I can really relate to that go on I'm sorry (laughs) My, my parents were just a little bit skeptic, but when I promised them I'd do high school in one year and finish it all, then it was okay. And I started a crazy career as a, as a model in Paris and New York, and I was working like all the time and, and, uh, and it was going really well, you know, but it's, it's like with a lot of things like in life that just takes you for a ride and you're in it and it's happening and you're doing it and you just go from one thing to another. And then when I when I lived in New York for a while, I, I just realized that I was like turning into a bit of a robot, you know, like I wasn't really uh, living in that tomboy Pocahontas heart space anymore. And I was definitely not surrounded by by nature uh, other than Central Park and like the odd Chihuahua walking the walking down the street. Um, <laughs> so uh, I I realized that I was really not happy you know and but it's like I think with all of us like when we we don't really want to face the truth and we don't want to realize it and then I got like a crazy warning and and a wake up um I was walking back from a film set uh, after shooting a movie and I I got robbed and held at gunpoint oh wow and uh yeah it was crazy um completely unexpected and uh, but that day, like I didn't bring my wallet, um, but there was these two guys and the third guy that was uh, pointing a gun at me. And the thing that the guy said to me was like, you don't want to die, so start living. And then he, they grabbed my stuff and walked away. Oh, wow. I'm just getting goosebumps um, listening to that. That's so crazy. Where was this? Where was this? This was in, in Brooklyn, um, like quite remote in mm-hmm. Brooklyn. And and then I was, you know, super scared to tell my parents because I was only 18 at the time and I was scared that they would tell me to come home. So I went back to my flat and and the first thing that I saw when I went in to the door was uh, this globe that um, my grandfather gave me. And I, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go wherever. And I spun it and my finger landed on uh, the country in the southern part of Africa called Namibia. Um, and I had never heard... <laughs> much about Namibia before um although I had traveled to Africa uh, but I think it's like most people's knowledge of Africa is a bit like vague <laughs> like we know it's there right. and there's many countries yes. <laughs> um and then I just sat down and googled because I didn't want to be like a conventional tourist so I I decided to uh google volunteer work with wildlife and that was the Pocahontas side of me kicking in again and I got a friend of mine to go with me and um Two weeks later, I was on that plane and I had booked a two-week volunteer um, trip in Namibia working with wildlife. And uh, yeah, two weeks sort of turned into two years because they offered me a job and I started working with, you know, lions and leopards and baboons and and, uh, really living out this amazing, (laughs) completely different life. I guess in some way it's similar because it's just different kind of predators that live in Africa than in New York. But um, (laughs) um, in New York, they wear heels, but in Africa, it's like they actually have claws and teeth. Um, um, But then um, I think, you know, like what really changed my entire life uh, was the first thing was, you know, the first time I was confronted with a lion and lion I had to work with is you realize that you can't be anybody but yourself because this animal sees straight through you. And a lot of people, we think we go to Africa to like help and save animals, but actually they end up healing us and, 
and confronting you with all your fears and all the things that you've sort of like been hiding behind masks and images and want to want to be something like they they shed your layers and turn you into a human very fast and a very humble human at <laughs> at that and and then um later on i i met the bushman people which is the oldest tribe in the world uh they have the most genetic matches to the entire world so they're sort of like the cradle of man uh so that's the junquasi people it's with a click <laughs> and uh when I met them, you know, at first I I was like everybody else, like you get you get a bit um, affected by poverty and all these things, and I just wanted to like help and save them. But then when I sat down in the sand and started talking to them, I felt like I was the poor one, and that they really like they saved me out of my poverty of perception, and and that's when I realized that everything I'd been doing with wildlife was sort of just crisis management and they are sitting with the key of like why we are so disconnected even though we're living in the age where we're so connected in all other ways through digital social media whatever um and that laid the groundstone for me starting a um organization called Nanufasa where um basically what we do is is i believe in like when i reach out a hand um and you reach back, then it doesn't matter who reached out first because we both gain something from the process. And um, it's a project that sort of extracts ancient knowledge and turns it into modern opportunities so that we don't lose the knowledge and of, of indigenous people, but that they in turn also don't um, lose their culture and identity and that they can still sort of hang on into this modern modern that is moving so fast and we can learn more about how to coexist with mother nature through them and uh yeah it changed my life completely and i've been running that organization for for seven seven years oh, now. really that's incredible thank you so much for sharing your story i'm really really fascinated just listening to you what do you think was like the biggest moment in your life where you realized that you know running the organization would be your primary purpose from that point forward um i think for me the 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 changing point was that the very the very thing that i that i mentioned you know like i went to africa to save and help animals and people and what i realized was that i was probably the one that needed the most saving and that no change can happen on the exterior parts when you haven't dealt with everything that's inside you and the bushman really opened my heart and put me in direct contact with my own true nature and and they w basically rewilded and reconnected me and and that's when i realized that my purpose is to to pass this on you know and and give this to other people as well because what what whenever we feel that there's things that holds us back or we have limiting beliefs or we don't believe that we can do something or create something. It's just because we, we, we find ourselves separate from everything else that we see. And my, my Bushman mother, Toshe, uh, she once said to me, and I think this was the real turning point in, in my life purpose was when she said, like, she asked me if I could see this massive baobab tree that was in front of us. And I told her, yeah. And she, she said, like, but if you can see it, then it is you. So how would you treat it? And and that just inspired me to like really think about the world and as a house we live in, and every country is just another room. And and our responsibility is to be a part of that house and and a part of the ecosystem and and act out our role and not be separate because. You know, we're not just people living in nature. We are of nature. And, um, yeah, that, that put me on this life, um, <laughs> life mission to, to, um, to reconnect people and, and nature once again. And it's sort of like this in constantly creating this interconnectivity between people and nature because we've been for so long sort of running as individuals. But I think this is now the time of like a new consciousness of of running more into a, a, as a community um, and working together. You know, if you look at termites, when they build their termite mounds and they look kind of small, those termite mounds, but they actually are like 
13 meters wide in diameter and like four meters deep. That's when you realize that we only can really build grates if we work together and that we might just be grains of sand, but there's significance in small things. And, and that inspired me to just go on this like crazy mission to like try and create a new ripple effect of change that. <laughs> yeah. It's, that, fascinating. Um, it's beautiful. What does that look like to you on a day to day right now? So where are, first of all, where are you right now? <laughs> it's always an important question. Well, right. So, um, right now I'm in Norway and it's, um, uh, it feels very foreign to me, even though I'm from here, because it's like minus 20 degrees Celsius. And uh, I'm, I'm, I, I realize I'm a, a solar panel. I need to, I run on the sun um, and, and love and, and uh, smiley faces, uh, which is not necessarily the case in Norway <laughs> right now. <laughs> but, um, uh, but more so, yeah, so then I'm, and then I'm going to Paris tomorrow and then back to Namibia on Sunday. Um, so right now, like what I'm on, what I'm doing is uh, uh, this complete nomadic life because I'd been very, um, very focused on being there in Namibia, and for a long time I almost like resented the world on the outside because it's so pure and so it's almost like an avatar community, you know, where we're all connected to everything around us, and then you sort of resent everything that's opposite. But then I started realizing that you know every everything is just parts of you and it's about bridging and reconnecting it because the one world doesn't exist without the other. So I walked across Namibia in um, May mm. with two Bushmen. We walked 1,490 kilometers and lived off the land uh, in a modern and ancient way, um, but without any money. And after that, I was like, whoa, it's really it's really time to bring this this to people and not just keep it to myself, you know? And so ever since May, I've just been like traveling around like crazy and trying to, you know, the, the definition of the old nomads is like the, the people that mm -hmm. felt at home everywhere. But the definition of like a modern nomad is sort of like the people that don't feel like they belong <laughs> anywhere. So they just travel around. So I'm trying to bring the old nomad trend back where we realize that, you know, we have roots underneath our foot soles and that we are actually mm -hmm. at home in ourselves. And, so I, I started like now doing more um, workshops and public speaking and there's documentaries coming out and things like that, that sort of brings whatever I've been sitting on uh, out to the world. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a crazy combination because you're like between being in the bush where I have to climb a tree to get a bit of reception and wait half an mm -hmm. hour to send out an email to suddenly being back in this crazy connectivity and, and being accessible all the time. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a weird, weird world we're living in. It's like, we're living in all different ages all at the same time. Definitely. You know? <laughs> Definitely. Oh, I can really relate to the idea of being a nomad that feels like she doesn't belong anywhere, but at the same time, I feel very comfortable just about everywhere. Yeah. And that's, that's so, it's such a beautiful mission to have to teach people to actually bring back that old nomadic way. So if people were interested in working with you, if people are interested in, you know, getting involved with this project, what could they do and how can they reach you? So, um, I, so I have my own personal, um, uh, websites where I, I do offer different things like public speaking. I also do like uh, private coaching on rewilding and reconnecting. There's also workshops and, and retreats. Um, and uh, I'm actually doing a, a retreat in Portugal of all places because I'm trying to bring rewilding back <laughs> to, to Europe as well uh, in, in May, which is uh, called the Wild Wave. So it's a mix of like surfing, uh, yoga, and then my element, which is nature and, and, and reconnecting. And, and then I have my organization, which people you know can they can support and get involved um uh or even visit so what i do is uh, uh i created a concept called adventure students because i don't believe in this like conventional cultural tourism where people come and visit people and watch them dance and clap and woohoo i connected to a tribe um but i believe in learning from from uh from different cultures and and really putting them in a mentor seat where we are the students that have to to uh, close our mouths and, and listen to the knowledge that they have 
gathered for hundreds and thousands of years. Uh, so you could come and learn how to track and survival skills and, and really understand nature on a higher level. And yeah, that's, um, that's something you can do. So, um, yeah, there's many, many ways of, of rewilding and reconnecting. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> so what, what we'll do, we'll post your um, personal website below and it'll have the links to the retreat in May in there as well. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, yes. Great. Yeah, it's great. Under so event. all yeah. the events will be posted below in your personal website and also Nano Fasa. That's beautiful. So quick question before yeah. we go. If you had to give advice to anybody that finds themselves in a similar place where they feel that they are not really living, what advice would you give them? I think um, if you don't have any lions around to wake you up, um, I think most of our most of us we know when we're not happy it's when you know it's we go to bed with less energy than we started off with and and when our when our day to day when we start living for Fridays and hating Mondays then then it's time to sit down and and ask yourself what is it that nobody has to ask me to do but that I do anyways you know when we were kids we created worlds within worlds and our parents never had to pay us to go and play um, we just did it out of inspiration. So what is it that nobody needs to ask you to do that you just do and find, gather the things that you love and, and, and really try to put them in a context of, of, of something that you could, you could create a, a life out of and, and uh, believe in, believe in yourself. But I think my, my biggest advice is follow your heart uh, with your head mm, as a guide. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. I am so inspired just listening to you. And, you know, please keep me, keep us, keep the community posted on everything that you do. We'd love to have you be part of this community. And, you know, we'll definitely be interested in supporting you in any which way that we can. So I'm, I can't believe we're already at the end of our time. So thank you so much for making the time and for being here today. Thank you for having me. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your ongoing support. Before I leave you, I want to invite you into my world. Please go check out dnxcommunity.com. This is where you'll find the other nomads and evaders of convention. We'll see you there. And if you're interested in our English speaking events, go and check out dnxglobal.com. You'll find the link below this podcast as well and if you have time one last favor please go to itunes look for sylvia christman or look for the dnx podcast and leave a review thank you so much lovely people and i'll talk to you next time bye